Wedding shop workers, what are your worst bridezilla stories? Story 1. My brother and Sile used to own a bakery. Wedding were our primary moneymaker. If a couple had an outdoor wedding, we would always warn them that it needed a net around it to protect it from bugs. Most couples understood it and usually had a net around it or didn't care. This one bride wanted an extravagant wedding cake. The middle section was a four-tier cake, two tiers on the bottom pillars with columns and two tiers on the top. Then she wanted four other sets of a four-tier cake that had a stairs connecting the middle section. On the stairs were small dolls that were supposed to resemble the bridesmaids and groomsmen. Each cake was also a different flavor as well. Then on the bottom, a waterfall. This cake was ugly. The reception was also in the county close to a creek, so that means lots of bugs. We strongly urged her to use an easy up with a net around it. She declined. We also made her sign a waiver excluding us from any liability after the cake was dropped off. We have this as our last drop off as it was hot and we didn't want the frosting to melt by sitting in the hot sun all day. We also freeze the cakes a day or two before so by time it's ready to, the cake is de-thawed and the frosting is still intact. This is how it went downhill. We arrived to start assembling the cake and I noticed little tiny gnats already in the cake. We did a quick fix to eliminate the problem but alert the people there that they needed something to protect the cake as by time it's ready to serve, it will be covered in bugs. We show them the problem, but they didn't seem to care. So whatever, she signed the waiver, we finished and left. My SIL gets a phone call around 8 p.m. that night with an angry bride. She wanted us to make and redecorate the exact cake and bring it to her with in an hour. There is no way in hell we would or could do that. Since I am better at customer service than they are, she handed me the phone and I explained to her. I feel your frustration in the matter, however. You were informed of the dangers of setting up a cake outside, in the country, with no protection may bring. We even explained to, insert name, when setting it up, that there will be a problem if this cake was left in the open. Additionally, you also signed a waiver excluding us from any liability as well. I asked her if she had any more questions. She threw a big humph and to the sky up on me. Story 2. Management here, you have no idea the sense of entitlement that walks into my store. I would consider us the Walmart of weddings. We cater to everyone from bums who smell like pour out the water to rich nobodies who think they're somebody. I've seen it all. These dresses are cheap. To these dresses are too expensive. I'm a rational person, and being part of management team means I'm trusted to make important decisions and enforce policy. All sales are final, depending, of course, but you have to have one great excuse to get a penny out of me. The best, by best I mean craziest excuse yet, was a spouse who had her wedding coordinator go in to refund the items because she was in a psyche ward after trying to terminate her sister when she announced she was pregnant with the groom's baby at the bridal shower. We refunded everyone but the sister who was ironically the maid of honor. I'm, And of course, I always make a special exception for sudden death, and it does unfortunately happen. A woman waited outside of our work for a co-manager because she wouldn't return her dress, which turned into a fist fight, which turned into the bride having an eye and spending time in jail. I've had women come in drunk and throw up in fitting rooms. I've had to call the police on a few occasions about a bum lingering in our parking lot with a knife. Women have pissed themselves or bled into wedding gowns fitting rooms. The bathrooms are a nightmare to clean because the floor is always sticky with pour out the water. Did I mention our store only caters to women? And devil children have come and gone. Children pouring cement into the toilets, running around the store knocking tea stands over, mannequins, displays, etc., sometimes on themselves. We have clear doors and I cannot tell you the amount of times young children have ran straight into them at full speed. Unmonitored kids locking the front doors or physically preventing other customers from coming in. Let's not even get started on the screaming or crying or even the fact that we have a fitting room with mirrors for walls that kids with sticky hands feel compelled to touch with every part of their body. We are not like say yes to the dress. People need to stop asking. There is no champagne or liquor allowed in the establishment. There is no food or drink allowed on the showroom floor. People will still hide it and do it anyways. There is this oh no commercial that highlights an amazing $99 dress sale, but forgets to mention that each store has maybe six dresses in that price bracket. Oh, but please make the entire commercial about the sale and showcase women in dresses upwards of $600, which really isn't that bad if you consider how expensive weddings are. Women come in and are spending thousands on their wedding and are shocked at the price of a gown that hasn't been mass-produced for the populace since the 1800s. Please, when I say we are the Walmart of weddings, I can point you to 10 other places with gowns upwards of 25000 Our most expensive dress caps at 2800 which is still a lot by my standards, but so are weddings in general, and you don't really need either to celebrate a successful union. Don't get me mistaken, I have my own wedding planned out to the last seconds, and I appreciate the ideas and symbolisms behind a lot of the celebrations within, but it's not the most important thing in life. 
That's about it. There's tons more I can say, but it's one of my only days off, and I don't want to spend it talking about work. Haha. -ha. Edit. If you made a guess about what store I'm talking about, you're probably 99% right. Second edit. I know Walmart might be a bad word, and I don't use it in front of customers, but considering we greet everyone at the door, accept everyone as they are, and have tons of miskey wedding stuff I like to think we are, in a positive way, similar to a Walmart. Third edit. Wow, my highest comment is one that turned from a story to a rant to a jumble of things that frustrate me. Sorry about my wording, my grammar, and everything else visually unpleasant about my post, but thanks for reading and voting. I love my job, and weddings can be beautiful, symbolic affairs that can take your breathe away. Don't let the little things discourage you or bring you down. Every bride can have a beautiful day no matter her ideologies, size, race, societal status, or financial status. A word of advice to any future brides, don't sweat the little things. Story 3. I worked as a banquet server at a ritzy riverfront hotel. People come from all over to have expensive overpriced weddings. Seriously, I'm jaded from attending so many. So needless to say, many of our brides were bridezillas to some extreme. Our summer season is very expensive. Usually our local brides get married there in the off-season to save some cash. One local bride that I will forever remember went absolutely bat-cow crazy. Before the wedding even started, one groomsman left because he couldn't stand her demands. We were all in the ballroom setting up as we normally do. At this particular wedding, she had a wedding planner who set the center prices, which were pretty general country theme. The bride storms in, literally has a temper tantrum that they are not right. The candle was supposed to be on the left, not the right. We fix it no problem even though it was not us, but her, drunk wedding planner who set them. Now you'd think that would be all but no. One of her brides made a lost her bouquet right before the ceremony. Instead of troubleshooting, she completely berates and humiliates her bridesmaid. Starts stomping her feet saying, Dad, I like a two-year-old. This was over and over again. Every little detail was wrong in some way, shape, or form. Needless to say, I was so glad I wasn't responsible for the bride and groom's table that day. Story 4. I own a print shop, and the large majority of the time, I flat-out turn down wedding invitation work. Not worth the potential nightmare. Sometimes I can tell the bride is cool and we make an exception. But a lot of times you can tell that the bride has had an invitation planned in their brain for 20 years, and there is just no possible way to make them exactly how she wants them. So yeah, I basically just say sorry we don't do wedding invites. Story 5. I worked at a wedding venue in college. This isn't so much a bridezilla story as it is just a bizarre, bizarre wedding. It was a 70 top, pretty small for our venue and banquet style, which was less pressure on the servers. We basically just had to keep things running smoothly from ceremony to reception to send off. It was an easy night for us, not for them. First, they got married in our vineyard. One of the little kids was the ring bearer and he dropped the ring. A few staff members were out for two hours searching through the brush for it to no avail. We think one of the geese ate it. Next, the reception. It was closer to a daycare because more than half of that 70 head count was children under 10. Groom was super great with them. Maybe he was a teacher or something. The bride didn't interact with them at all and overall seemed to have a lot of disdain for them. At one point, the groom even procured a guitar from somewhere and was having a sing-along on the floor with the kids. Bride was just off eating her dinner alone at the little sweetheart's table. Last, the cake. How it works. The bride and groom the cake out on the floor so everyone can get pictures and people cheer. Then, two servers bring the rest of the cake back to my station, where we and dish out the rest of the slices for the guests. We separate the top of the cake and pack it for the bride and groom to take with them. The intent is they share it on their first anniversary, as you guys probably know. Well, this cake went fast, because kids probably. So as we were finishing up the station and packing the top, groom comes back and tells us to the top. We double-check that is okay. Turns out he went behind the bride's back because kids wanted more cake. She didn't look all too thrilled with her wedding day, or with the groom. I didn't see them interact all night, and sometimes I wonder if they are still together. Story 6. Wedding shop owner flexes fingers to regale one. Bride S comes in on a weekend, finds the dress she wants, and put 50% deposit down. Panics when gets home and rings, demanding to come back in at the weekend to try the dresses on again. I agree because I am nice. Three late-night appointments, and about 10 text messages, some as early as 6 a.m. to tell me she loves the dress, to she hates the dress and back and forth. I worked out I spent about 12 hours to and fruing. Last one was Friday night, which is date night for me and my OH. I had made it clear that I only had an hour for this reason. She still can't decide. Sleep on it, says I. Speak on Monday, thinking if she still doesn't like it, I will refund her. And she can disappear off into the wilderness. Next morning, my bank rings me about me taking some money fraudently. You guessed it. Bride S wasted my life and my time and went and brought a dress somewhere else. After picking my brain for over 12 hours, too. Bride A 
comes to collect her wedding dress the day before her wedding, the dress has been steamed, pressed, and made to look crease-free within an inch of its life. She just has to go home with it and get it straight out of the bag so any tiny little creases fall out. Goes bananas, there's a crease in the dress bag. Day ruined, apparently. She was going to take it out on the day for photos, and a creased bag was the be-all and end-all. 3. Bridell ordered a colored bridesmaid dress to wear as her wedding dress? That's fine. I have done this a lot, except she is a big girl, like the top end of a size chart. She promised my faithfully she was going to lose weight. Big fat lies. She gained. The only thing to do was to put panels under the armpits to extend it after taking out every possible seam. She refused to come in to try it on or collect it. Sent her soon-to-be husband, who then spent 40 minutes telling me how I was a piece of S and how nonsense I was, and ruined her wedding and how very dare I, and to charge for the seamstress making it bigger. Then proceeded to tell the local bar where she was having the reception how mean I was, who then had a whip round to pay for her alterations. Then tried to take me to court saying she hadn't worn the dress. Shame for her. I had the photos from the photographer. 4. Bride J. When Alfred Angelo went down four weeks before her wedding, she had ordered her dress late and it was due that week. It could have been anywhere and there was no way to track it down from the UK. So I do what I do best. I rang around every supplier I had to try and find something that would fit and was similar. Fixed it with a supplier on Saturday AM as he was working to try and help all us stockists. I cried when the package arrived with him on Monday, driven down the country, to make sure I could sort out the bride. I paid for her alterations. Spent hours adding personal details such as beadwork to the dress, so it looked as close to the original as possible. One week to the wedding, phone call. I don't like the dress and want a refund. She's only 5 feet 3 inches and we had taken a lot of them hem off and changed it beyond recondition. This was truly only fit for her. So I have paid Alfred Angelo for her original dress, paid the new supplier for the new dress, paid the tailor 200 pounds to alter it, and then spent hours of my own time to sew beads on. I lost it. I cried, refunded the dress, and made her come and take it away. She refused to come and get it, so I drove it to her house, still sobbing, to be greeted with an angry groom who took the dress and put it straight in the bin. 5. At wedding shows at the weekend, we have to be up nice and early to drive to the venue, set up our stuff, get moved into the car park, and make sure we are awake enough to look bright and cheery and pretend we like people. One bride decided I was lazy because I didn't want to see her in my shop an hour after the show finished. I had been up since 7 a.m. and working since 8 a.m. for a 10 a.m. show start, which finished at 4 p.m. It then takes me about 40 minutes to pack down and load my car before a 30-minute drive to the shop and unload, let alone putting it away. She left with a flea in her ear and left me a review about how lazy I was. I replied and set her straight publicly and she looked like an idiot. 6. Bridesy Brought her dress from a cheap, nasty knockoff website after being in my shop and trying on the exact dress, but it was about pound 900. She got a dress from China for 90 pounds, expecting it to be the same. It was not. Stood outside my shop, banging on the door whilst with another bride sobbing. Let her in, listen to her explain how I was the bad one for it coming in like rags and how dare I work with these factories and designers to rob brides silly. Gave a leaflet on counterfeiting goods and sent her away. And finally, by no means least, we do a lot of weddings for people who are in hospices and hospitals who are terminally ill but want to be married. Bride in a wheelchair having a quiet appointment and finding it very difficult but found a dress she was happy with. Family and friends are all sobbing because they know she doesn't have long. Even me who can normally hold it together was a sobbing mess when her mum insisted on paying full price and no discounts for anything. I didn't agree to that and threw in a veil, tiara, petticoat, shoes, and a flower girl's dress. Next bride, after that appointment, flounced in 40 minutes early to her appointment, and when asked to go away for a cup of tea, turned all bridezilla and I swear her headspan as she shouted, well, it's not like she is going to live long enough to wear the dress, and I want to try on dresses now. Try on dresses. I must have looked a state. I had mascara down my face, but apparently I grew about 10 inches taller and wider as I told the bridezilla she was out of line and rude, and the most horrible person I had met to date, so cancelled that bride's appointment instantly and told her to never come back. I then sat with the bride in the wheelchair and rang around my local supplier friends to beg, borrow, steal, and get as many discounts as possible, and got her a free bouquet, cake, photography, and videographer for the day. She lasted 48 hours after the wedding, but her family were so grateful, and that's why we do it, for brides who are lovely. Story 7. Strap in, folks. This is going to be a bumpy ride at the end, but you'll love the full story. Forgive formatting on mobile. I work in a relatively high-end country club in the American South. We had a doozy last season. 
It was not only the bride who was crazy, but the whole wedding party. The happy couple were not members of the club, but had convinced our coordinator to sign off on it. She quit shortly after booking. New girl had to deal with the fallout. First off, they had been extremely rude to our new coordinator and managers through the whole planning process. They had a private coordinator as well, but she was pretty well useless. Ours didn't even know she existed until the rehearsal. Bride had demanded all kinds of free stuff during the planning. Now I have no problem doing a wine tasting to go with the food tasting. However, if you come back three times to try the same house wines after two original food tastings, I'm not playing ball anymore. You're paying for it at that point. You and the five people with you. Fast forward to the rehearsal. We have regular dinner service going on in our dining room for our rather exclusive members. Renting the ballroom for a day does not entitle you to take over the entire clubhouse. The bridal party are drinking, yelling, cursing, and being generally ugly all over the grounds. Nothing was right, according to the private coordinator that had never seen the space before this. Everything had to be moved. What do you mean your covered terrace can't accommodate 250 people for the ceremony without an extra tent? I was told the dance floor would be by those windows, not these. We absolutely cannot let anyone into the ballroom until after the ceremony, so I don't care that the terrace is only accessible through it. Make them all walk around the building through the wet grass. Bridal party is getting louder and drunker. The little old ladies trying to eat poached salmon in peace are obviously annoyed. Father of the bride has set up a provisional account to pay for the wedding. We don't accept cash or cards, only accounts. Bridal party knows the account number, and we've been told to put everything on it by our managers, as long as the person ordering knows the number. You can see where this is going. He didn't see it that night, but he argued every single drink when the bill came. Even the 18-year-old scotch that he alone was drinking. Okay, enough of the day before. On to the main event. Most of this day I was on the periphery since I was working on the other end of the building. The end they weren't supposed to be on, except the bride and bridesmaids, since their dressing room was on that side. I could still hear pretty much everything that was happening, and saw way more than I should have. As guests arrived, they were directed around the outside, as per the request. Mother of the bride freaks out because of course they didn't want her side of the family to have to go that way. They need to be allowed to walk through the active dining room and around the other side where the golf course is. At this point, the groom and groomsmen are getting positively sloshed in the men's locker room, which our members are still using as well. Bridesmaids have moved out of the ladies' locker room and are rampaging through the members' bar. And by that, I mean that we caught them multiple times pouring drinks behind the bar while the bartenders were getting their bar ready in the ballroom. With the same look every time of, Oh gosh, how did this bottle of liquor get in my hand and why is it suddenly half empty? Ha ha ha, silly me. Ceremony goes well enough, considering basically everyone standing up front could barely stand. You may be asking how we let it get to that point. They had snuck in a lot of booze. I mean, a lot. They were only having beer and wine served at the reception, so everybody and their grandmother had flasks and airline bottles and whatever they thought they could hide. Spoiler, they couldn't. Highlights of the reception because this is already pretty long. Bride is cursing. A lot. I don't think one sentence came out of her mouth without a variant of fudge. During hors d'oeuvres, Maid of Honor comes out of the locker room and informs me that it needs attention. You know, the room where only they had been for the last three hours because they had scared off all the members already. It shouldn't have been my job, but the attendant had gone home early due to an emergency. I figured I would take a look. I came right back out to get every manger I could find. I even cleared the coast so our chef could come look after he saw my reaction. It was quite simply disgusting. Small wastebasket overflowing because they had put a bunch of stuff on top of the nice big covered one and then forgot about it. Part of the overflow was a used tampon. There are separate baskets in the stalls for those. Dirty panties, about 10 empty champagne bottles, everything a normal person would put aside or throw away just wherever it had fallen. I removed the trash with gloves on and didn't touch one thing that was personal. I should have thrown out a lot more. About 1.5 hours in, Bride asks the bartender what people drink so she can get something to give to the band. When she is told we don't serve bands alcohol due to liability, she flips out. More cursing. How dare we not do exactly what she wants? Do we know how much she is paying for this? Not nearly as much as a lot of our members pay for theirs, I can tell you. She'll get all of the people fired because, clearly, they are against her for not violating policy and laws about overserving. New hubby manages to somewhat calm her down eventually. By this point, all of the guests are so loud and obnoxious and not staying on their end of things, that we call in extra security just to stand at all access points and wrangle them. Remember all that hidden alcohol? About two hours into the reception, the security guard nearest the men's restroom hears an awful noise from inside, goes to investigate and finds a broken urinal and an empty handle of Jack Daniels. Time for cake. This can't go wrong, can it? Wifey smears cake on the lower half of hubby's face. <laughs>
So cute. Hubby puts tiny dollop of icing on end of wifey's nose. Oh my flipping god, how dare you flipping do that? You're ruining everything. Paraphrased, it went on way longer than that. She proceeds to go literally running through the entire clubhouse and most of the surrounding grounds, screaming obscenities at the top of her lungs. As it was a nice night, many of our members were enjoying the patio off the dining room. One member in particular had been listening to the hubbub and asked me the names of the couple. I had to laugh when I remembered that he's a prominent divorce lawyer. I, jokingly, asked if he wanted me to pass out his card. He, very seriously, said yes. Party was shut down two hours early. Cops were informed of potential drunk drivers leaving the property. The bridal party were staying in rental houses on club grounds, so our security escorted them back. You'd think that would be the end, but alas, no. I did not witness the next day's meeting, but I gather it involved a lot of apologies from the groom and a lot more angry words for everyone from the bride. Plus debates about the bar bill from dear old dad because they could not possibly have drunk three kegs in that sort of a time. He was right. Sorry for the mistake we should have charged for the fourth tapped keg. To be fair, they were half kegs, but within three hours with several cases of wine and all the contraband booze, it was kind of staggering. About a week later, we were informed of an investigation claiming one of our staff had stolen the bride's laptop. For maybe two weeks, we were randomly called by the local cops with updates on the case. Then she found it in the trunk of her car, where it had been the entire time because they used a club-owned laptop to play their slideshow, which she had tried to walk out with. I think that's the whole story. I probably blocked some stuff out. We think the original coordinator did this to us on purpose. She didn't leave under the best terms, and confirming the booking was one of the last things she did. Story 8. Not a bakery, but I used to work for a really fancy wedding event business. Anne and Wiu. Quite a few bridezillas, but it is actually the mothers of the bride that are the biggest pain in the peach. Anywho, the one bridezilla story I have involving cake was when the couple getting married loved their dogs very much and wanted them at the wedding. They wanted the wedding outside anyway, so we agreed as long as there was a handler for them. They said that would be perfect. The day of the wedding, everyone working has a list of jobs to do to get ready for the wedding. All of my fellow employees are setting up everything so the couple's families can get ready and relax. We set out the chairs, decorations, flowers, tables, silverware, the dining room, the arbor, everything! The only thing they had to do was hold on to the dogs. Spoilers, they didn't. We finished everything on the inside in the morning, and we were almost done finishing everything outside when we all hear a massive crash on the inside of our massive event room. It was the dogs. One had started with the wedding cake and accompanied artsy cupcakes. The other moved into, on top of, the beverages tables where the broke around 80 champagne flutes, 60 stemless wine glasses, and around 120-ish glasses, along with four crystal punch bowls and all the accompanying champagne, wine, and punch. And they did it all within a few seconds. Needless to say, the bride and groom's handler was their 15-year-old nephew, who, in his eternal wisdom, thought that he would let them run around a bit before the wedding. When the bride walked out of the changing rooms and down the hall to see the noise, she was not happy at the sight of the massacre that took place, and lost her mind blaming us for everything. Why did you let the dogs into the room? Why didn't you keep a hold of them? Why would you set up your reception room so the incoming guests could get drinks and sit down and relax? ECT. ECT. She said she didn't care how, but to get this all ready before the reception or she would sue us for all we were worth. We took the I don't care how to heart. We called every business within a 10 mile radius buying, borrowing, bartering, everything we could. All the glasses, all the wine, all the drinks. I was in charge of driving the boss's car to the nearest bakery and forcing the bakery to make a serviceable wedding cake with everything they had. I was a little late on bringing the cake back. But everything else had been cleaned, reset, and back to its former glory before the wedding ceremony was over. After the night was over, and the bride and groom left, we gave everything back we borrowed, boxed up what we bought, and started shelling out the favors. We tallied up all the damages the dogs had caused and the wedding cost. It was in the five-digit range. The couple was understandably angry at the bill, so they swayed. They lost. And to my knowledge, still leaving one-star reviews on every rating website out there. Story 9. Oh God, I actually have a story here. So I do henna tattoos. Usually I work a booth at either a theme park or fair. Occasionally I work at this little shop in the downtown area of where I live. I'm finishing up my shift at a local theme park when the lady as the shop calls me in a complete panic. A bridal party has come in with no warning, and not only does the bride want the full traditional wedding henna done, but wants henna on her bridesmaids as well. A total of 20 people who need hands and feet done, and the bride who wants hands, feet, and her back done in henna. I get to the shop, and there are now two of us who can do the designs the bride has asked for. Bride takes one look at me and says she won't let me do the henna for her or any of her party. 
I'm white. I currently have rainbow hair done up in an pixie. I also tend to give people the impression that I am hella boy. But really, I have no interest in anyone, so I just look however the hell I want to look and life is awesome. So, after hearing this witch of a bride spout off about how a white girl can't possibly do henna right, I point to the pictures in the example book. They were all done by me. Then I took my happy peach home, turned my phone off, and had a nice nap before going to my other job. The bride ended up storming out of the shop when she found out there simply was no way to do it. I still wonder if she found someone to do it. Best part, a lot of her wedding party were white girls as well. So I guess it's okay for them to wear it, but not for a white girl to know how to apply it. Story 10. Been DJing weddings for about 10 years. Most brides relax by the time I really get to work. And most of the time, the groom is in charge of the music. So I don't have too many stories. However, one bride was really, really into her wedding really being symmetrical. She measured the entire room and wanted everything placed at the exactly places she requested. I had to measure the distance my table was from the wall and the other tables. I had to measure the distance my speakers were from each other and the dance floor. On the day, she was upset at me because I failed to inform her that I had lighting for the dance floor and wished she had time to determine where to place them. Story 11. Used to cater wedding receptions in college, but that was many moons ago, so a lot of my stories have faded away. Except one. Momzilla shows up to the reception hall about 30 minutes before everyone is due to arrive. Thinks that one of the tables is too close to another table, and asks that we move it about 5 inches. Okay. But then of course, all the other tables are now too close and insists that we move every single table in the venue over 5 inches. All 16 of them. We manage to scurry and move them. But you know what happens when you move 16 tables. Every single chair doesn't match the place setting now. We manage to move every single chair, over 160 of them, right before the first guests arrive. Never mind that it's taken up time we should have been prepping for guests, filling water pitchers, etc. And we're now behind. Crazy Mom then insists that every fork is slightly too close to every plate. We politely tell her we won't be moving 160 forks and she has a fit. That was memorable. And the bride who got blackout drunk fell and broke her leg at the end of her reception. Made for an interesting night. Story 12. I'm late to the party and I'm not a wedding shop worker. You guys are saints. But here's my bridezilla story. My sister and I were asked to be bridesmaids by a mutual acquaintance. We both thought it was odd she asked both of us, and not someone closer to her. But we planned a wonderful weekend in a resort town three hours away for her bachelorette party with the other two bridesmaids, who were her friends. She started the weekend pouty and on her phone most of the time. Seemed totally ungrateful for the good time we were trying to give her. Things got better when we broke out the hard liquor at our hotel room later. Then we saw a band at a bar, and there were other bridal parties there. She was fine for a while, dancing and having fun until one of the other bridal parties sat down near us and started getting more attention. They were all young, cute girls, and the band was flirting with them. Guys were asking the bride to dance. And all of a sudden, my bride sat down and began furiously texting on her phone. We asked what was wrong, and she would only say that she wasn't having fun anymore and wanted to go home. We were all like, okay, let's call a cab and go back to the hotel. And she was like, no, I want to go home, which was three hours away. We were all drinking. No one could drive her home. She storms out of the bar and begins calling people that none of us know to come and pick up her in the middle of the night because her fiancé isn't answering his phone. She steadfastly refuses to get a cab. She says she's going to stand in the parking lot for hours until someone picks her up. She even made us miss a bus that could have driven us to the hotel for free because she simply refused to move. That was what made me snap. I screamed at her. I've never in my adult life screamed at another adult like that. I told her that she was going to get in a car and go back to the hotel because we weren't going to leave her out here all alone, and we certainly weren't going to stand in a bar parking lot for hours while she waited for someone to pick her up, and she finally relented. We got into a cab and got back to the hotel. Bride is still texting, not speaking to any of us now because I yelled at her. When we got to the hotel, she refused to come inside. She stood in that awkward space between the two double doors and refused to move again. Myself and one of her friends went up to the room to pack her stuff, while my sister and the other fiend stayed downstairs to make sure she didn't bolt on us or something. She finally got a hold of her fiancé, who agreed to drive down and fetch her. My sister said that when Bridezilla finally decided to talk, she about how she was mad at U.S. because we hadn't helped her enough. I was livid. We'd gone to wedding expos with her, helped her pick out her dress, picked out our dresses, and we'd planned an entire weekend for her bachelorette party. We spent hundreds of dollars to make her happy, but that wasn't good enough for her. And while I was up in the hotel room gathering her stuff with her other friend, I learned that she's been previously married, had multiple foreclosures and court dates because of unpaid debts, 
and had two children she no longer had custody of. All things I had no idea about, even though I'd known her for years. Not sure if, if her fiancé knew it either. When her fiancé did arrive, she didn't even greet or thank him. She just blew right past him and sat in his car. Her behavior was like a petulant teenager, and this woman was in her late 30s. It was unbelievable. But in the end, my sister and I bonded with the other two bridesmaids over the tumultuous situation, and now we're friends. And the wedding was astoundingly uneventful. So I guess I'm happy with that. Story 13. We had a table of 40 people book a table, choose a menu, get place cards made, and in book rooms for a wedding reception. They emailed the day before to cancel the rooms. On the day, no one showed up for the lunch. When we finally get in touch with them, they say they emailed to cancel. I'm just there like canceling rooms does not equal canceling the whole damn thing. But what are we meant to do? It was her wedding day and we had no card details or deposits because you don't really expect a function with that much forward planning to just scrap the whole thing the day before and not tell you. We now take deposits for larger table bookings and ensure we talk to them in advance and in nearer to the day. It was how much she didn't seem to care or comprehend that on a busy summer. Sunday lunch, half of our restaurant was sitting empty waiting for her and all of her guests. That really blew my mind. Story 14. I worked at a church that had weddings in the D.C. area. The worst bride I dealt with was part of a couple. They showed up in a Lamborghini, I think, and the groom kept asking if it was safe to park the car out front. I think he was just trying to show off the car. He also wondered if his father's Bentley would be safe in the alley behind the church. We were in D.C. He was lucky we had any parking. Then the bride was walking around talking about all the extravagant things she was wanting for the wedding and pointing to things saying, this will never do. Worst thing was every time the bride turned her back, the groom kept staring at my balls. It was strange. His bride looked like a supermodel and he was very good looking. I don't know why he has to sleaze on church workers. After that and other demanding people I told the church I don't want to do weddings, so now volunteers for the church does it. Story 15. Not a worker, but stood up in a friend's wedding. Also, I may have posted this before, but I feel it's too good not to share again. Less than 48 hours before the wedding, the bride to be decided that the shoes that came with our tuxes weren't to her liking. She wanted me and the groom to go to various stores, one of them Nordstrom's, and get some better shoes. My friend, the groom to be, was totally stressed out with all the various loose ends he had to tie up before the wedding. Fortunately, I was able to talk some sense into him. I told him one, there just wasn't enough time to go shoe shopping in two. There are only four basic types of dress shoes for guys. Shiny or not shiny, with laces or without. Three, no one cares what kind of shoes the groom and groomsmen wear. He came to his senses and was able to persuade his now wife that new shoes were unnecessary. Story 16. Soon to be bride here. I'll share my recent experiences with two salons. A bride wanted the entire salon to herself, and a salon manager doesn't remember anything the first salon I went with just my sister. Now, I am getting married in 18 months, so we were purely looking and just seeing what was out there. I had read somewhere that consultants appreciate you letting them know if you're only looking to which I did with mine. She was lovely, by the way, and in no way the negative at this salon. We grabbed some dresses and started trying them on. Meanwhile, there was one other bride in the showroom whom was also shopping, and she seemed to have been really in love with a dress when we walked in. As soon as I walked out in their first dress to show my sister, the other bride and her entourage started glaring and went really quiet. I didn't really take much notice because I thought maybe they were discussing money or whatever and I didn't want to be rude in eavesdropping. After trying on the first dress and heading back in, I could hear a commotion out the front. My sister came in and said the other bride was screaming at the consultant for letting me try on dresses at the same time, because she was supposed to be the focus, and she thought it was so rude to allow a skinny little thing take away my attention. I am in no way super skinny. After that, the lady left, and my consultant and I talked about her worst experiences. My second experience was during a designer showcase day, so it was busy. You had to make an appointment to which I had, and arrived promptly. The lady at the desk checked us in and said we were welcome to look around. While we looked, ten minutes past our intended appetit time, the manager came over and asked how we were doing. We said we were still waiting for a consultant, but understand they're busy. She took my name and said it shouldn't be long. Twenty minutes after our intended apt, she came over again, and it was like she hadn't even talked to us the first time. Like went through the whole welcome script again. I restated we were waiting, my name is blah, and what time we were supposed to start, and she apologized and said she would get right on it. Then about five minutes later, I get a call from the salon asking if I was still coming to my appointment, to which I walked back out to the admin desk and showed I was here. Eventually, when I did get a consultant, she was the most amazing person ever. I told her I knew exactly what I wanted to try on, and she got me started straight away. It was her last day, and even though my apt went slightly past closing, she never made me feel rushed or pressured to buy. In the end, I found my dress. 
But as a manager myself, I was appalled by the salon's manager and since have seen from FB reviews that other brides have experienced issue with her as well. Story 17. I am a bride that just recently witnesses a meltdown. One of my bridesmaids couldn't attend the bridesmaid's dress fitting with the other girls because she had just had a C-section. So her and I went after she was healed enough to go. The store we went to was extremely busy and it was just the two of us, so the attendants asked if we would be okay in one of the smaller rooms. It was only my one girl trying on a dress, so we had no problem with that. Well, there was a bridal party of at least 12 girls plus the bride all trying dresses on beside us. As my friend is in the room getting dressed, I see a shoe go hurtling across the room in front of my face. Her mom had grabbed white shoes instead of ivory-colored shoes. Some of the bridesmaids tried to calm her down. She threw herself onto the ground and pouted until another attendant found ivory-colored shoes. I'm pretty sure it was the exact same pair of shoes as before, though. Story 18. Not a wedding shop worker, but at the wedding when it happened. As she was walking up the aisle in her dress, the bride tripped over her gown. And instead of just getting up and moving on, she let loose an absolute huge tirade of cursing and screaming at everyone. When her dad tried to console her, she just got up, slugger her dad in the face, and started just throwing cow everywhere, screaming about this mother flipping wreck of a day. I'll terminate that notch for making the gown too long. What ate you looking at Earl, your notch of a wife is a whore. She just lost in and proceeded to rip up her own dress and run out of the church half into the rain. I mean, I know the stress is high, but God, oh no, she lost her flipping mind. Story 19. My mother and aunt used to do catering together on and off. And probably the worst was when my cousin hired a chef trained under Gordon Ramsay after they had prepared the entire food in advance to do the food fresh because the bride's father objected to using conventional foods over organic French cuisine. He's down to earth otherwise, but holy cow, my dude, we wasted so much food that night. Story 20. Makeup here. She loved her makeup at the trial and texted me later to tell me how great it looked all day. On the day of her wedding, I did the exact same look on her with all the same products, and she started crying, making a huge scene and telling everyone that she hated it. A fellow makeup artist took over and pretended to put makeup on her with clean brushes. She looked in the mirror and loved it. The bride also did this to the hairstylist who does incredible work making her change her hair three times. Majority of the time the bride is the most kind and relaxed, but there is always one person in the bridal party that makes you question your career choice and life in general. Story 21. Way late. We'll get buried. And holy moly did I read a lot of these before I remembered my bridezilla story, which like many is a mo bridezilla. I was six years old, my sister was eight, and we had been conscripted as flower girls for a cousin's wedding. Two small boys, a bit younger than us, were the page boys. I remember very little of the ceremony. It was dark and the prevailing theme was red. Poppies. Odd for a wedding. I remember after the ceremony, the mother of the bride locked the four of us in a farm shed. The wedding was held on the family farm estate, which had no lights, nowhere to sit but the dirt floor and one rolled up carpet. We were bawling in our custom tailored dresses and suits, of course, except my badass sister who escaped and found my parents who rescued us. All of us, Rory and Michael, did not get left behind. I think the MOB got removed from the Christmas card list, but that was about it. The couple got divorced a few years later, and we haven't seen any of them since dot 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 in my 30s now. Could have been worse. Story 22. Not in the wedding industry, but a Leo Park Ranger who oh no near arrested the mother of the bride when she put her hands on me. This large hotel fronts on the beach I patrolled, and we traditionally did not care if they used the beach for short periods as long as they cleaned up. It's everyone's park, so enjoy it was the boss's way. So I'm driving down the beach and see the staff setting up the arch and stop to say hello. Now I usually ask others to avoid the area so the couple gets the space alone. I never even made it up the sand before mom was in my face. I really tried to be nice and de-escalate the whole thing, but she was screaming at me. I was ruining her baby's day. I tried to explain the opposite that I would park on the access till they were done and they could have the whole beach, but she grabbed my polo and radio strap. Too close to the gun. Mom went in cuffs. The planner talked her down and she ended up apologizing. I let her go. The planner even told the bride and her we would help them with privacy if they wanted to do pictures ECT. Some people just don't think. Story 23. Little late to the party, but I was a ballroom dance instructor, so I've got some good stories. Wedding couples were my specialty, so bridezillas with unrealistic expectations about their dancing abilities were a dime a dozen. The biggest story that comes to mind was a couple who came in a week before their wedding. Their first dance was to Ed Sheeran's Thinking Out Loud because of flipping course it was and they wanted to do the dance from the music video. The dance that involved one classically trained ballerina and one Ed Sheeran who spent months and countless studio dollars training with said ballerina. And they wanted to learn it in a week, no, not happening. The bride blew her lid. 
We don't even need you. We can just learn it from watching the video. I nearly pissed myself from the effort of holding in laughter. Story 24. I worked in the gift registry at a large department store. Sometimes we run low on stock that brides have put on their registries, and we have to scramble to get the items they want from other stores across the country. It is difficult and time-consuming. One bride didn't receive all of the drinking glasses she requested until several weeks after her wedding. She came in very distressed and told us that we had ruined her wedding because she had to wait for her glasses. Story 25. I'm getting married in the fall, and I honestly just don't understand some of these brides. I understand that they are paying money and want things done a certain way. But this mentality of, it's my wedding night, I should be treated like a princess, and all my insane actions should be tolerated, is complete nonsense. Story 26. Not a wedding shop worker, but a freelance wedding photographer. Just last week, I a wedding where the bride was marrying a military officer, lieutenant. She was raging at everyone. The banquet manager, the groom himself. When I accompanied the groom as he was getting ready to take shots of him, putting on his uniform, etc., he was unable to receive any calls as the villa had poor reception. We got back and she immediately went, Why couldn't I call you? No reception then at least give me your groomsman number so I have a point of contact. And this was in front of everyone, mind you. When the solemnizer arrived, she got angry as well as she, the bride, was still not ready for the event which was supposed to start 15 minutes ago. She was very beautiful, one of the prettiest brides I ever for, but goddamn her poor husband. Story 27, I've been messed up out of money from two people, where they want custom gowns that are impossible or they change their minds on fabric. I've also noticed that it's usually random bridesmaid, MOH, or mom that end up being crazy. I've shifted and no longer sew for people. Saves me so much stress and I don't lose time and money.